Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to My Golf DNA. Today, you and I, we're gonna work on becoming better drivers of the golf ball. In fact, what we're gonna be doing here today is I'm gonna be putting all of the control back in your hands. You're gonna learn how to make adjustments the correct way when it comes to hitting the driver because I know a lot of you at home react inappropriately when it comes to the shot shape that you're producing. You start hitting a slice, you start swinging more left, you compound on the issue. You wanna remember, as you embark on this journey, that curvature is going to be dictated by the path. We're gonna be working on neutralizing the path and neutralizing the face at first. Then I'm gonna show you how to influence the path in a very robust or exaggerated format to give you the feels and sensations to tie back into the release so that you can start actually hitting golf shots in two different directions. And at the end of it, I'm gonna teach you the move and transition that's gonna set all of this up. And you're gonna be able to go out there and start hitting the golf ball way better out of the center of the club face day in and day out. So before we jump into step number one, if you're brand new to the channel, do me a big favor, head down below, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments today, please feel free to post them up below. And I'll help you out as best I possibly can. Here's exactly what you're going to be learning in step number one. You're gonna be learning how to get the golf club to move from one side of the body to the other perfectly in a very neutral rate of closure and a very neutral path at first. And what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna get very connected to the movements that took place in order to be able to create that sort of movement from one side of the body to the other. Now, what we have here today is we have a drill that's set up to create some very quick awareness and alleviate a lot of the technical thinking. This drill is not designed to have the smoke coming out of your ears and the tongue hanging out of the mouth when you're doing it. We're gonna get you connected to the club face. We're gonna get you connected to the path you're gonna be able to manipulate the path to create the sort of curvature that you're looking for, and then you're gonna stomp on the gas pedal, and you're gonna be able to use this drill on the driving range, and you can actually use it as you start to get better and better with it in a consolidated fashion on the golf course to help start creating the shot shape that you're looking for. Now, in step number one, our job is to get the hands and the arms and the golf club to work very independently from the body from one side of the body to the other. Now what our focus point is going to be is to get the club from a toed up position to a toed up position. Now there are many different ways for us to be able to get the club from one side of the body to the other, but we're going to be working off of what we call an arm independent release. And a lot of you at home get very confused by that comment alone because when you look at the best players in the world, both men and women, you'll notice that in the arm independent release, the body doesn't really fully stop, right? Now, in that movement, you have to understand that because we're hanging onto the golf club with both hands and the club is moving really quickly and our arms are attached to our shoulders, then of course your chest and your shoulders and your spine have to respond to that. So this drill is gonna help you start to feel what it's like to have the arms and the club move independently. And I've got a little checkpoint or a little window here that's gonna help you kind of feel what I'm talking about very quickly. Now, these two lines that I have on the ground are going to be off of my toe line. One in the direction away from the target, one in the direction towards the target. I also have the golf ball that is teed up that I'm going to be hitting. It's going to be in line with the logo on my chest. And I have a golf ball from my perspective, okay, this doesn't need to be set up perfectly, that's in line with my trail foot and one that's in line with my lead foot. With these little small reps, because we know that the chest and the shoulders have to turn, this little window is where I wanna feel like that's the maximum that my chest and shoulders are gonna turn. So as I set my hands and arms into the hip high position over here, I just wanna make sure that my belly button and my chest are pointed at that position, not way out away from it. And the same thing on the lead side. If the shoulders and the chest turn a little bit more than that in this drill, that's totally fine. Remember what the goal is. The goal is to get the hands and the arms and the golf club from one side of the body to the other in a very neutral path and a very neutral rate of closure. So let me demonstrate exactly how we're gonna do this now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our setup and we're gonna do a series of about 20 reps. This is in your first practice session. And all I want you to do is I want you to make a little small shift onto your trail foot by pushing down into your trail ankle and I want you to turn your chest towards the ball position that's off of your trail foot and make sure that your hands from your perspective are on top of your toe line and the club shaft is parallel to the line that's on the ground and the toe of the club is up to the sky. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift our weight back over to our lead ankle, and all we're gonna do is let our arms swing through to the other side so that our hands are directly on top of the toe line. The club shaft is parallel to the line that's on the ground, and the toe of the club is up to the sky. Now, what your wrist and forearm position looks like on the lead side of the body 
is going to look very different from one player to the next, and it's going to be very dependent on the grip that you bring to the table. I tend to use a little bit more of a neutral to the weak side of the grip, and so what you're gonna see is, is that I'm gonna have my wrists and forearms fully ro ro rotated over the top of one another. We're not going into release patterns in this video. We're talking about how to get you to hit the ball straight with your driver and get you connected to the club face and the path. Now, here's a little secret or a little tip for you when you're doing this drill. Okay, a lot of you like to use a lot of trail shoulder and trail arm and trail wrist to get the club over to the other side. But from this position, what I want you to notice is, is that my trail shoulder, my trail arm and my trail wrist are more or less kind of underneath my lead side. And I want you to go ahead and when you shift onto your lead side, I want you to go ahead and keep your trail shoulder, your trail arm and your trail wrist underneath it. What it's gonna force you to do is it's gonna force the spine to start to lean without having to think about it. And it's gonna certainly help the release where you're not trying to shut the club face down really quickly and ultimately affect the path simultaneously. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna walk through the whole series of movements. And remember, it's hands gonna be at hip high to hip high, toe of the club up to the sky, toe of the club up to the sky. And this is your tolerance window for your chest and your shoulders to turn. So pressure shift onto your trail side, shift back to your lead side. Okay, check to make sure the toe of the club is up to the sky and you're cooking. And I want you to do this for a series of 10, 15, 20 reps. And you should be very relaxed with your hands and your arms. In fact, you can actually see that the club is kind of brushing its way off the grass on the way through. Tension is not your friend here. Keep the tension levels down in your hands and your arms. Back check to make sure the club is towed up. Make sure it's towed up on this side and make sure your hands are covering the lines on both sides of the body. And you're gonna be cooking with some fire here. So it's right ankle, toe up, left ankle, toe up, trying to keep the trail side underneath it, checking the position. Get really good at this movement. Every single rep counts, right? You don't wanna string reps together where you're doing them too fast to where your brain can't comprehend what it is that you're actually trying to get done. Okay? When you can do that and you can do it freely and you know that you're not having to spend a whole lot of time thinking about it, now it's time to step on the gas with step number two. Step two is going to look like this. So a nine to three swing, your hands and your arms are gonna be starting at the top of the acceleration zone. I'm gonna give you a checkpoint in which they need to be coming in from, but what the focus point should be is exactly what you just learned down here on step number one, now coupled back with a very strong move through your lead leg and your lead hip. This is the post-up move. Now, if you have a post-up move that leaves a lot to be desired, then I'm gonna put a video up on the screen right now and a link in the description below for you to go watch that'll teach you that movement. The post-up move is a very important part of the golf swing. What it's doing is it's helping you add stability to the release. It's helping to make sure that you are well timed up with the release, and it's also helping you stay in posture, believe it or not. So what we're gonna be doing from that top of the acceleration zone is we're gonna be rolling onto the inside portion of the trail foot, and we're gonna be simultaneously posting up here. Now, when we do this, we're still keeping the focus points exactly in line that we did with step number one, but we're gonna add in some hyper-exaggerated feels for an in-to-out path and an out-to-in path as you start to embark on the journey. And we're gonna start out by trying to get a little bit on an in-to-out pathway first inside of these movements, and then we can back check it with a few shots, and then we're gonna to go to the opposite side and hit some shots from there. And I like to do this drill kind of back and forth with students to give you sort of the confidence and the courage that you don't need to have some sort of big manipulation from your hands and your arms to be able to make the ball flight or the ball fly in the direction that you want it to go. Little small changes on camera feel like these gigantic exaggerated feels and that's what this is going to help you do over the long haul. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by doing 10 reps in a neutral environment where we're not gonna be trying to influence the path. So we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves into a setup position. Okay, and I wanna do a couple reps down here in step number one first, just to get really connected to that hand and arm function. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and shift and turn our body back to nine so our lead arm is parallel to the ground. And I want your hands to be in line with your sternum 
not back and behind it, not out in front of it, in line with your sternum. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start shifting to our lead side, keep the trail side underneath it, toe of the club should go from up to the sky to up to the sky, keeping that same process in place. Okay, nine o'clock, post, release. Okay. Now let's just flip on scope real quick just to see what sort of path and what sort of face to path we create on these swings. I'm going to try to keep my tension levels down in my hands and my arms. Okay. So we're just going to be looking at the path specifically. Okay. So hit that ball really straight so it was 1.7 to the left, okay, which is a very, very neutral sort of environment for most of us, right? We can get it closer to zero if we want. What I would do to ultimately influence that is I would do exactly what I'm about to teach you. So I would start out by learning the movements. Step number one and then step number two, getting connected to those two movements together. Remember, it's post up and release. If your hands and arms start to swing above the three o'clock position on the lead side of the body because of momentum and inertia, that's totally fine. As long as you were connected to what was going on down in front of you, you're cooking with some fire. Now, we're gonna start the processes of over-exaggerating path. Now, remember, big, big feels are really, really small on camera. To get our path to feel like it's gonna be more in to out, what we're gonna do is from that nine o'clock position when we start to post up, is we're gonna feel like our chest stays pointed at that golf ball that's in line with our trail foot. We're not trying to change what we felt through our hands and arms down in section number one. So follow me and do it this exact same way. So we're gonna do a couple of small reps in section number one. Not trying to get my trail side on top of the golf club. Okay, I can feel that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple reps, nine o'clock, I'm gonna feel like my chest Stays pointed at that back golf ball, trying to keep the release exactly the same. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and hit a shot and I'm gonna show you what that did to the path. So the path went 3.3 degrees in to out. So I went from 1.7 out to in to 3.3 degrees in to out. And I felt like I was pointed in that direction when my hands and arms passed in front. It felt terrible, it felt over-exaggerated. Let's do another rep, just so you can see how I want you to do it. So, toe up, toe up. Okay, nine o'clock, hands in line with the chest, chest closed. Okay, so path should be into out there again. There was curvature. So that was only 1.5 into out. Face to path was a little bit more shut. It was 2.3. So now you can see that these big exaggerations will help you correct the problem that you showed up with. So if you've got a big old slice, then stay in this drill by focusing on feeling closed and let your arms swing. You're gonna start to see that thing straighten out pretty quickly. Now. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Now, what I like to do with this one is I like to think about the chest turning and getting the arms into position for the release. So that little connection that you would feel at the top part of the bicep and the chest, you wanna feel like they stay connected to one another until your belly button and your sternum turn out in front of it. Now, what we're gonna do again is we're gonna start real small, toe up to toe up. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to that nine o'clock position and I'm gonna go ahead and post up, but I'm gonna try to get my chest turned just a little bit more open by feeling that connection, still keeping the release exactly the same, seeing that release and feeling the movements that I just created in step number one. So let's do a rep or two, then we'll hit a shot and see how much it influenced it.
So notice how I'm still keeping the post up and the release, the movements of the release exactly the same. Okay, so I can feel it. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get my body to stay connected to those feels and see that visual in my brain about what my hands were doing in step number one. Okay, so that ball had some left to right curvature in it. Yeah, so there you go. So the path went all the way up to 3.1 degrees out to in. It felt like I was swinging over the top, but I wasn't really. I was swinging just enough on the out to in spectrum that I created that sort of curvature. Now, what do you think I want you to do before you start moving into the high speed zone here where we start to really increase things? Well, I want you to get really good at steps one and two. Step number three is where we start to make the move onto, into transition and we start dropping our arms down into that acceleration zone. And now you've got the full swing shape ready to rock and roll. Let's take a look at step number three now. What we're gonna do with step number three is we're gonna start making full swings. But one of the things that gets you into trouble with all of the golf swings that we watch day in and day out versus what you do is you try to hold on to too much tension in your shoulders and your arms because that's more or less where your connection point comes to a head, right? You try to hold on to the club and you do it with tension in the shoulders and the arms. You don't need to be tensed in your shoulders. In fact, what we need to work on here is getting you to feel what it's like to release tension from the shoulders so that your arms start to work down into the acceleration zone so that you can do the manipulations that you need to do to the path in that section of the swing. What you wanna be doing in that slow zone is you wanna be setting yourself up for success through the acceleration and into the speed zone. If things get out of place because you're not shifting enough, your shoulders or your arms are doing something funky, then none of the stuff that we just did in sections number one and number two are gonna actually come to light. Now, how I like to do this is basically, we're gonna start out by drilling to the top and feeling what it's like to allow the arms to work independently from the shoulders. Then we're gonna marry that back up to some weight shift. And then we're gonna marry that back up to what we were doing in steps number two and then in number one. So let me show you exactly what this looks like. So I want you to go ahead and take your setup and I want you to go ahead and drill to the top. Okay, now from here, instead of moving your hips and moving your shoulders, I just want you to lower your arms straight down. Your shoulders should be very closed. Your right shoulder should be up and your left shoulder should be down. But more importantly, you can see that my lead shoulder has gone from a protracted position now down into a very neutral position. It feels very relaxed. I can feel what it's like to have my shoulders allow my arms to come down. That's that gravity aspect that you hear us talk so much about. Those two big factors that move the hands and the arms from the top of the swing are gravity and a whole lot of leg and hip action, right? Now, if you can get that inside of this movement and marry it back to steps one and two, you've now taken on the full swing shape. You understand how to start making the shift onto the lead side. But now let me show you how to practice this. So I'm gonna do some reps up to the top Bring my arms down. Now I'm gonna couple that with some shift. So you can notice that my arms drop down into the acceleration zone. Now what I'm gonna do is up to the top, I'm gonna shift and then I'm gonna post and let it release. You can see I'm breaking it up into sections. I know all of these three movements. I know what it's like to release the club from toe up to toe up and doing that independent from my body. I know what it's like to be able to post up in that second section and release the club just like I did in section one. Now I know how to get into the acceleration zone properly. So let's go through the whole protocol here and so that you can get out there and start practicing and start hitting the golf ball a whole lot straighter. All right, so let me show you how to take this onto the golf course now. So what you can do is you can do your prep work behind the golf ball or you can do it with the golf ball. Do one rep where you're just kind of focusing on the club face, now you can feel it. Then one rep where you're gonna basically feel the club face and the path that you're trying to put it on. So if I'm gonna hit a draw now, I'm gonna try to feel my chest closed inside of that movement. So get that going, then I'm gonna make one full swing where my arms drop down into the acceleration zone and then I'm on the gas. Now 
That was a hard, low draw, almost a hook. So let's talk about what we learned. So we learned that we, as long as we understand how to get the club face to rotate from one side of the body to the other, and we keep that consistent, and we keep that tension free, then what we can do is we can ultimately start making speed to that movement by getting the golf swing a little bit longer and then adding some engine back to that movement by using your lead leg and your lead hip. You also can understand that you can influence the path and create the curvature that you're looking for. Where your shoulders are pointed is gonna help influence where the hands and arms are gonna be moving. And the same thing applies with your spine. And I get this question all the time, is with the driver, is there big setup adjustments? Well, you can certainly widen the base and move the ball position up. And you can focus on creating a little bit more tilt to the spine. But that should be, again, once you start to learn this sort of baseline strategy. Think about your driver's swing as being like three gears. You want a stock gear, and you want a full enchilada gear, and then you also want the kind of like a practice gear to get all of these movements that we rehearsed in a good spot so that you can start to see and feel what it's like to hit real golf shots. And once you start building some confidence in that and you know that you can move the ball in two different directions, now you've got a slam dunk in your hands. But remember, it's club face, path, and then setting yourself up. That's how you should be encompassing this drill. It's not a drill that's designed to be perfect in each one of these sections. Where you should be trying to be perfect is down here, understanding these movements. If you get these movements right, then you know that in order to get there, you have to do all the other stuff right in the golf swing in order to be effective. Practice smart. Don't go out there and try to bite off more than you can chew. Create the feel, create the awareness, back check it, hit some balls, and have some fun with it.